I'm just going to open in prayer and uh, we're going to have a study today and uh, hope everybody's okay today. Dear Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and your grace. We give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor. I acknowledge, Lord, that you are King of Kings and that you are Lord of Lords. And, and so, God, I thank you for all your kindness and all your love to me. And I give you the praise and I give you the glory and I give you the honor. And I thank you for all your goodness and all your love and all your care. Father, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you would be in this study today, that you would bless us all, that we would know your grace, we would know your love, and we would know your care. We ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to have a study in Ephesians chapter 3. I'm going to be teaching the Word of God. Now, before I start, um, I just want to clear up one or two things. Um, as at this moment in time, as I am before you, I am really at peace. I'm really happy. And I am really content. I really am. And I just want to say that that um, my online journey um, has been a very um, massive journey where people know that journey. They know all the issues of the journey and they see all the facets of the journey. And that journey online is at many times uh, an, a sad journey, a difficult journey, a hard journey, where I have bird my soul to the world. Certain groups, atheist groups, took advantage of that and used that and manipulated that journey for their own propaganda purposes. Many looked on, probably shaking their heads and wondering what was going on. But at the end of the day, what has been done has been done. It was my journey. And many of the things that I did in that journey, I am proud of. Even though um, I was on YouTube a lot, I was on YouTube a lot because I was really hurt and broken and I had become addicted in the sense that my heart was broken and the only outlet for that was on YouTube. But at the same time, I am proud that I took on the militant atheist. For all my crazy videos, for all my stupid videos, for all my breakdowns and all the rest of it, I am absolutely 100% proud that I took on the militant atheist. I am proud of that. I'm not going to be ashamed of that. And that there are certain groups within the atheist community that have tried to discredit me, tried to make me look a nutter. I've been able to collect my videos without my permission and present me to the world, to the public, as some kind of nutcase. But those videos had a context. Those videos were alongside many, many good videos that are not there anymore because I've had to take those channels down. 
So the world gets a wrong impression of who I am. If you want a fuller impression of who I am, you have to search wider on the internet and see a bigger Jason Burns that you don't see presented by the atheist. And if you do that, you will find many, many videos where I'm presented in a better light. And I know that I made a number of videos that were not pretty and not good. And I know at times I was unbalanced, very unbalanced at times, and at times did uh, compulsive things, making uh, video debates uh, to some atheists. And continually making videos, as it were. And these things were unbalanced. But at the same time, with mixed motives, I did make videos that were important. I made some very important videos, and I had a very important message. And that message is as relevant today as it first was. And that message in all my archive channels that the atheists have collected and in my my um, my videos that message is that there are groups of atheists that will stop at nothing to take away people's freedom of speech that was all my gripe within my videos and I went on and on and on incessantly about that and the atheist community some of them actually lived up to the expectations that I was calling out a wider community where they began to take away my freedom of speech and not allow me to say anything about atheism and they went on a campaign and they made me ill online because of the many things that they did to me and it was not pretty many times I, I looked hurt, bruised, and that's because of things that went on behind the scenes that you don't know about that this online online communities did to me. And through that journey um, I had many issues and I had to work through them and I was honest and I told my story. And there were times where I was um, addictive and to YouTube um, because I come through a very very difficult time, a very difficult five years. But like I said, I am proud to have made those videos for all the mess because I truly believe that message that message is there's a militant atheism out there that will stop at nothing to take away people's freedom take away people's freedom of speech the atheist community some of them um, have done everything they can to discredit me, everything they can to present me in the worst light possible. And they have succeeded. Now there have been some Christians, one or two, who have been concerned. Concerned, number one, that my making videos, I'm a better man than having these kind of online cyber fights with these militant atheists that they recognize that I'm a better man than that I have experience in preaching and teaching I have experience in theology I have a degree in theology and one or two have come to me and told me that this is not healthy and it will destroy me because of the 
the online difficulties that some of these groups can cause and maybe one or two even today are concerned and I just want to say uh, to those people that my journey is my journey that over the five years none of you were there for me none of you were there when I was broken nobody was there nobody was there whether it was in the atheist community or in the Christian community not one person was there not one person took me and helped me through a very difficult period of my life not one person my family was there and one or two friends were there but most of you 99.9% .9 when I say I'm not one person I mean you online as a community and churches not one person was there for me and I struggled on with a broken heart on YouTube trying to work out my issues and then near, near the end I've recognized that I was addicted to YouTube because of the hurt that I was trying to work through but I also recognize that within that journey I had mixed motives and I recognize that in that journey that I genuinely 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 deep down was sincere in the terms of challenging a group that I felt as far as I'm concerned was anti-democratic I didn't fight it in the best way and I was a wounded prophet and if you want to look at a video that defines me it's called the wounded prophet and it's on this channel nobody should have their free speech taken away whether they're mentally ill or not a person's freedom to speak is abs as an absolute right nobody should have their freedom taken away there is no justification in a democratic society for anybody's free speech to be taken away so whether you're a Christian or whether you're an atheist and you look at me and you judge me always remember this you don't get to judge me you don't get to define who I am whether you're a Christian or whether you're an atheist because the person who gets to judge me and define me is Jesus Christ the end of the day I am answerable to him I am his child and I am his servant I will listen to counsel for I have a good family and I have good friends and I will listen to their counsel and I will take on board what they say but above all I will listen to Jesus Christ recent events that happened recently were so crushing that happened in Manchester recently um, that was filmed um, you can find the video of the person who took it upon themselves to take a camera and to record me in town um, recent events that happened so crushed me 
that it also brought healing to me because at that point I was so humiliated by that event so traumatized by that event and a series of events that have happened uh, from this online community that when it broke me it made me there was a lady who who um, was a down and out and she was lying in the street as a down and out and as she was lying there people began to walk past and laugh at her and then someone urinated all over her and at that moment when there somebody urinated over her they laughed at her and at that moment as they did that she got up and she began to look after herself she began to respect herself she began to have dignity for herself and she went on to be a professor she went on to do an open university degree and she went on to be a professor and she was interviewed on television and she was telling a story about being uh, a down and out and being humiliated by this person who urinated on her and someone said well what made you get up why did you get up and then go on to do a degree and an MA and a PhD what made you get up and she said I'm not going to let anyone humiliate me anymore I'm a human being and I deserve respect if you type in Jason Burns on YouTube you will see video after video after video of online humiliation from the atheist to, against me if you thought, type in Jason Burns you will find an archive channel that is specifically been set up by the atheist community it's not just one individual there are others who support it that picture is a picture of humiliation you go on the channel and it's just pure humiliation every video is out of context every video is not in the context that it should be not in the context of the hundreds if not thousands of scholarly videos that I did which were also wrapped in and out and also I have to be honest that there are times where I'd lost it where I was making 10 videos challenging DPR Jones and things like that and I was unbalanced and obviously um, that channel and those archive channels when people see them it's just pure humiliation out to purely humiliate me and then on top of that around the archive channel most of the videos that come up are videos where to be honest uh, quite pathetic where I put ketchup on me because I'm begging the atheist community to stop and then the atheist community take the video and um, trying to make me look bad and then on top of that atheists making videos attacking me and on top of that Google Hangouts where they're talking about my mental health and then purposely trying to wind me up so that I get angry so that they record it so that they can put it on the archive channel and it goes on and on and on and it's just 
You just type in Jason Bird and it's just pure humiliation. And what happened to me the other day was pure humiliation. And so when that down and out was urinated on, she got up and she wouldn't let them do it again. And I want to say to you as Christians who are concerned that I'm addicted to YouTube. And I want to say to the atheist out there and anybody else who supports me or doesn't support me, I want to tell you this, that you can humiliate someone so far and then something clicks. And I've been humiliated so much that something has clicked. And what has clicked for me and where it has brought complete healing strength and renewal to me is this that I am a minister of the gospel that I am a preacher of the word of God that I am a child of God and I am a servant of God and that is my calling that is who I am that is what I should do that is what I am good at that is me. I am a preacher of the Word of God. That is my training, that is my qualification, that is my experience, and that is my my um, my calling. And I'm not perfect. I struggle with things and I make mistakes. And I have issues we all have made mistakes, we all have issues. But just as Paganini could play the violin, just as Rembrandt could paint a picture, just as somebody may be trained to do be a lorry driver or someone trained to be a milkman or someone trained to be a carpenter. Well I'm trained to preach. I'm not addicted to YouTube anymore. I'm not addicted. I am not. Um, I've not got that angst, that struggle that I had before on YouTube, where I felt the need to go on YouTube to try and ease the pain and the hurt and the struggles that I was going through. I don't have that need. It might sound a bit sound contradictory, but I don't. The need that I have right now is to be me, to speak as me. I am healed and I am back. The real Jason Burns is back. The real Jason Burns is back. And nobody is going to humiliate me and try to stop me from being me. Nobody is going to do that. Now, I um, I will, um, if God wants me to do, preach on YouTube, and I'll most definitely preach in Manchester, and I will do that, 
and not one person anywhere has the right to judge me the only person who has a right to judge me is him because not one person whether it be in Manchester or whether it be in YouTube knows who I am not one person knows my journey fully and I'll continue to be who I am I'll continue to exercise my God-given calling to preach the Word of God I, uh, I am sorry that I was not the man that I should have been in some times I am sorry that I was angry in some videos very very uh, unbalanced in my anger and I am sorry that I said things without thinking about it and it caused a lot of upset to people I am sorry about those things um, I do think if the atheist community had any decency at all understanding my journey if they had any decency at all they would take the archive channels down but whether they do or not it doesn't matter because at the end of the day it's what I think about myself and it's what I do with my life and what I'm going to do with my life is I'm going to be me and I will celebrate my history I will celebrate those videos they might be crazy videos they might be a look a mess they might look humiliation but I'll celebrate them because they were me it was my journey and I'll celebrate them because many of those videos are out of context and I'll celebrate them because they're part of a far greater body of work that is good stuff that you can find and I'll celebrate it because it's made me the person that I am today and I'm only going to go from strength to strength at the, from this point so I don't know if anybody really does care out there or not but I'm me I'm Jason Burns and I'll do what God wants me to do the only end of the day I can trust in him and he'll guide me and he'll lead me and he'll show me the way and he'll show me the way forward and he'll show me and he'll look after me and he'll meet my needs because my God's never let me down Now, if atheists want to get upset because I'm preaching this, the Word of God, then that's up to you. If Christians want to get upset because I'm preaching the Word of God, then that's your problem, not mine. I'm feeling strong today and I'm feeling really happy I'm feeling really at peace and that's the way it's going to be I remember years ago when all this stuff happened to me I gave a guy a lift to the hospital and I took him to hospital uh, he was troubled for whatever reason and I just took him to hospital and we're in the car and I was struggling with all my issues this was maybe four or five years ago and he said you know when you work this th he says when you work this through you'll be the man and God be the glory I've worked it out and I've worked it through the 
humiliation that I experienced three days ago and the humiliation that I've gone through and the sheer utter destruction of my character on online by this community, some groups, the incessant humiliation that they've been doing. has made me go back and find myself. It's gone, it's made me go right back deep inside in my heart, right, right back and recover, recover who I am. And do you know who I am? I'll show you who I am. This is who I am. Ordination certificate and my degree. That's who I am. That's who I am. So nobody can take that away from me. So I want you to be encouraged. The one or two people that really know me, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged to know that Jason Burns is fine, is happy, and he's forgetting the past and he's moving on. And that's me. For my enemies, I want you to know that I bear no grudge, I bear no bitterness, and I bear no malice towards you. I wish you all the best, and if you're ever exposed, and um, people expose my enemies and make them look bad, I just want you to know if you are ever exposed, for some of the things that you've done against me. I want you to know this, that I would ask everybody to forgive them and I would ask everybody to forget. Do not retaliate to these people but show them kindness, show them mercy, show them forgiveness, show them the love of God, show them grace because they have been subjected to a lot of videos by me over the years and um, it's not been easy for many atheists to have their own beliefs battered week in week out like I battered them so be gracious to them and be kind to them and forgive them and like I said if any of my enemies are ever exposed I just want you to say to say that Forgive me for whatever I've said and done, and I am sorry if I have ever hurt you or said anything against your community in any way that has got you angry. Please forgive me. And whatever you have said or whatever you have done against me, I forgive you. And if you're ever exposed or for, for anything and found out, whether it be against me or against anybody else, you will. I, I hand give you my hand of friendship and a hand of love. And if you ever need me, I'm here for you. And you'll always have a friend in me. Um, you can always um, email me. At the moment, I'm not taking Skype, so. People, few folk have Skyped me, but I just wanted to be on my own. I didn't want to talk, so that's why I've taken you off Skype at the moment. Um, but if anybody needs me, anybody wants a friend, all you have to do 
is um, send me an email. You can get my email and uh, come on Skype if you want to. People know my Skype, so so that's to my enemies. I hold out my hand to you as a friend, and um, if you ever need me, uh, I will turn you away, and I'll be there for you if you need me. And that's it. So I'm gonna do a little preach now. That's that's the stuff out of the way. I'm going to do a little preach. I would really dearly love it if the atheist community could take those archive channels down. If you don't take them down, I understand, but it would really be uh, a great help to me. Um, but if you don't, don't worry about it. What's done is done. Um, having said that, I'm going to get on now and just be me preaching the Word of God. And um, that's it. And if I come on YouTube, I'm just going to be preaching the Word of God. Maybe I've got a few apologetic notes. And uh, just enjoying life and getting on doing the things that I should be doing, which is preaching the Word and getting out there preaching the Word of God. And evangelizing. So thank you for listening, and uh, I'm going to get on now. So if you want to stay and listen, it, that's great. If you don't, it's the same message I did last night. And uh, I want to give a shout out to the crowd that have been with me for four years. They've not been given the credit that I didn't realize. I've not realized. I know it sounds a bit sad, but I have had a I've got this small fan base of people that have been watching my videos. They're not particularly interested in my Christian beliefs, but they found me highly entertaining over the years. So I'm going to give a, a shout out to uh, you guys out there, and uh, just hope you're okay. And uh, so I wish you all the best. And just thanks for watching all my videos and uh, taking an interest. And um, I don't know where the future leads or where it's going to lead in terms of me preaching. You know, many of you are not going to be interested in that, but that's where I'm heading for the future. So, so that's it, really. I'm going to get on and preach now. So. Please pray. Please pray people merit my good videos and spread a little good J around YouTube. And uh, that's all I've got to say, really. Nothing else to say. All right. I'm going to get on that. So I'm just telling you how I feel today, what I think, and. I just wish everybody well today and may you all know God's peace and blessings today. So I'm going to pray as I do this study. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for your love and for your grace and for your blessings. I give you the praise, I give you the glory and I give you the honor today. And uh, I just pray, Father God, that you bless today. I pray that you bless this study. And I pray that the that all of us might know your love through it. And I just pray for your Holy Spirit's presence now. And I just pray that above all that you'll be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. It's a lovely day out there, so I'm going to... Uh, get on in a minute after this so and enjoy the day please feel free to mirror the video if you want to mirror this video um,
be nice if Christians could marry or people who are supporters rather than <laughs> other folk. So anyhow, let's get on. So Ephesians 3. For this I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of his dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to, to you, would how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words, wherein when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of his men, of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God even unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers and heavy, heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulation, for you which is your glory for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath and length and depth and height, and to the know the love of Christ which passeth the knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Paloma Faith she used to wrote a song it's a good song by the way only love only love can hurt like this only love can hurt like this must have been a deadly kiss only love can hurt like this we can all go through difficult times and we can all go through challenges in our life and in the hurt of wondering whether someone loves us or not we can ask the question what's the future hold for us well God has three things for your future today first of all he has the grace of God for you Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 if you have a Bible please get your Bible out Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 says wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power Ephesians 3 7 He was a, a minister of the grace of God, the grace of God, the undeserved mercy of God. That is what he was a minister of. He was a minister of the grace of God. Imagine a hospital with no nurses. Imagine a fire station without firemen. Imagine an army barracks without any soldiers. What is a hospital to, to be doing? It is to be looking after the sick. What is a 
fire station to be doing looking after fires trying to put them out what is an army barracks for it is to produce an army in order to fight a war well what is the church for what is the church to be doing well the church is to be a minister of grace like Paul Paul saw his task says one writer of being a channel of God's grace to men Paul saw his task of being a channel of God's grace to men one writer Charles Spurgeon says I am bold to tell you that my master's right riches of grace are so unsearchable that he delights to forgive and forget enormous sin the more glory to his grace no matter how sinful you've been no matter how bad you've been you can be forgiven today enormous sin enormous wrongs enormous failure can be covered under the blood of Christ today and I thank Christ says Paul Jesus our Lord who hath ennobled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry he was before a blasphemer but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus 1 Timothy chapter 1 12 to 14 who was before a blasphemer a persecutor injurious he was a really bad man but he says and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant our great the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant every sin that he committed the murders that he committed the blaspheming that he committed God forgave him one writer a liberal theologian Barclay said but in the ancient world the barriers were complete no one had ever dreamed that God's grace and privileges and love were for all people the grace of God is for all people I don't care again what sins you've committed I don't care how many times you have committed them I don't care if you're the the Mexican mafia and you've done stuff that you shouldn't have done you can be forgiven in Christ 1 Timothy 1 15 this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief he was the chief of sinners and yet he was forgiven God can forgive you and show you the grace today I remember once the principal was talking to me uh, Dr. McGonigal of the seminary that I was at he said Jason the the grace of God can cover all sin all sin all failure all your mistakes all the the things that you have ever done wrong God can forgive he can wash it clean and he can make you anew that's what he can do for you don't live in a in a fear don't live in a shackle don't live in, in a, a prison of guilt because God's grace can come to you grace is undeserved mercy secondly the riches of Christ for you Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 unto me who am the least the less than the least of all saints is his grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ Ephesians 3 8 unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ 
the unsearchable riches of Christ. I've said this before, Tosini, uh, a musician was leading people into a museum, a music museum, and he came to the piano of Beethoven and he was there with these folks showing them the piano of Beethoven. And he said this, gentlemen, I am nothing, you are nothing. Beethoven is everything. Beethoven is everything. If the Apostle Paul was here, he would say, Gentlemen, I am nothing. You are nothing. Christ is everything. It's all about Jesus. In him dwelleth all the fullness of Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9 In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yep. All the riches of God are in Christ. All that you need is in Christ. For Christ is God. I've told the story last night and I'll say it again. The great train robbery they stole all that money and they took it in the 60s they took it to a farm there they had all the money they had all the money and they thought they were rich but if you believe in Christ you are richer beyond them because you have all things in Christ because he's God In Acts chapter 19, 17 and 19, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many that believed came and confessed and showed that the deeds, showed their deeds, many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver Acts 19 17 19 all the occult books in the Ephesus was brought to be burnt because the Apostles went in preached the gospel many got saved and they brought all the books and the books were burnt all the occult books the occult's big business but there are all sorts of things that we can get involved in that don't do us any good. It can darken us mind. But they found Christ and then they ditched these evil books for Christ. In 1 John 1 7 it says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin 1 John 1 7 and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin the blood of Christ shed for you today Ephesians 2 13 but now in Christ Jesus you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ Romans 10 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Isaiah 55 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the Lord and he will love pity and mercy for him and to our God for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon Isaiah 55 7 Christ shed his blood for you because of your sin and my sin he took your punishment and my punishment so that you may live and I may live that's what he did he, he died in your place he shed his blood for you that's what he did he did that because he loved you because he wanted to take your sin take your judgment for you and he wants you to trust in him thirdly what does God 
got for you, well, the love of God for you. Ephesians chapter 3, 18, 19. May be alone to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and, and length and, height and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 18, 19. I love that passage. May be al alone to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all of God. Imagine you owe 20 grand and you had to pay it tomorrow. Someone pays it off for you today. God paid your debt. You owed him, I owed him, but he paid your debt. Paid for my debt. How did he pay? John 3.16, here's the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Romans 5.8 but God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. Ephesians 2, 14, 15. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love which he had loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, have you been saved? 1 John 4, 9 and 11, in this is the love of God, was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 1 John 4, 9 and 11. And this is the love of God, was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, he loved us, and sent his Son to be a propitiation. The Greek there means the appeasement of the wrath of God. The propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Christ gave himself for us. He showed his love for us. That's the love of God. And God wants us to reflect that. But God, what God has for you today is his love. If you want to trust in him and believe in him today. So the three things that we've looked at today, the grace of God for you. We've looked at the riches of Christ for you. And we looked at the love of God for you. And uh, the singer, Paloma Faith, her song is, Surely I wouldn't care if you walked away, but any time you're there, I'm begging you to stay. When you come close, I just tremble, and every time and every time you go, it's like a knife that cuts right through my soul. If we reject God, it's going to be like a knife cutting through our soul. Matthew 25, 46. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. Now through them unto the fire and threw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 13, 15. Now I don't understand those passages. I don't understand the doctrine of hell. 
I, I'm telling you now, I don't understand it. But I'm not here to give my opinion. I'm not here to give what I think. I'm here to preach the Bible faithfully and to teach you the Bible. And the Bible clearly states there is a doctrine of hell. There is a hell. There is a weeping and gnashing of teeth. And now, I don't understand it, but if the Bible is warning you that there is a hell, then there is a hell, and to forsake it, to turn away from that. And you can go into all sorts of things and say, oh, well, it's scaremongering tactics. No, no, it's just God's word, and God's word says it, and you either believe it or you don't, and if you believe it, you're saved, and if you don't, you're going to be lost. Now, how that lostness turns out, I don't know, but I know this, it's going to be a sorry state. Because you're leaving God and you're, you're rejecting God. But the Bible clearly teaches how. We can't pick and mix bits here and there like these liberal people do. The Bible is the word of God and it is not to be messed with. It is the truth. It is the word. You either preach it as a whole truth or you don't. And true preachers preach the full counsel of God. So, we've looked at today Ephesians chapter 3. For me, it's a picture of a gospel minister in the grace of God, rejoicing in the gospel and declaring the gospel. And I hope that you come to realize today that if you want to know God, you can through the gospel, through what Christ has done. You can come to know God today. However sinful you've been, you can be forgiven and know God's love and cleansing. And so may God bless you today. Have a lovely day. I'm going to close in prayer. And um, and thank you for listening. And if you want to come to know the Lord today and have salvation, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please come into my life. I believe you died on the cross for me and Jesus will come and he will forgive and the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and you'll know peace and joy. Okay. Let's close. Father God, I thank you for this day and I thank you for your love and your grace and care and I give you the praise, and I give you the glory, and I give you the honor. I thank you for your love, and your goodness, and your blessings. I thank you for everything that you've done for us today. And God, I pray that this message would be a blessing, and would be a help and an encouragement to people, and that people would come to know you and trust in you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless and that you would encourage and that you would save. We thank you, Lord, for those words, all things work together for good. Excuse me, to them that love God. Thank you, Lord, that you turn things around and we give you the prayers and the glory today. So, Lord, we commit everything to you today and we leave everything in your hands. And we pray for your blessings upon this day for all of us, for all our family and all our friends. And for all that we know today. We ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to get on now. Um, I'm going to be taking some time out, uh, having a couple of weeks kind of holiday, and um, and um, to show people that I am free of YouTube, and then I will come back and make videos preaching, and uh, also to give people an opportunity to take the archive channels down, and. Um, and for people to sort themselves out concerning me and so give them uh, on YouTube to, to give them time 
to um, to take those archive files down and any videos that that need to be taken down. So I'm just hoping that things will be sorted out. And so I'm going to be taking uh, two weeks out and um, just trusting that um, all the humiliation that surround where you type in Jason Burns, that some of it will be shifted and the uh, a more balanced picture of Jason will be given of crazy stuff and Bible teaching um, when you type in Jason Burns. So I'm hoping that atheists and others, Christians, and others will be able to shift things around on YouTube and get things changed so that a fair, more fairer representation of me is presented um, and that there's peace between me and atheists. So I hope you have a lovely summer and um, I just wish everybody well and um, God bless everybody. So that's it. Have a lovely day. And uh, maybe see you in a few weeks' time. Um, I'll, ju I'll just be preaching. All right. God bless you. And uh, have a lovely day. Take care. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for coming to listen. Take care. I will be uh, leaving comment section on. Uh, I won't be looking at who's making comments, so if someone could moderate it, uh, if people are abusing it, please um, uh, I don't know what you do, but if you press on the thing and uh, alert YouTube for me, uh, I want people to have the opportunity to share their thoughts if they want to share their thoughts. Um, but please don't abuse the comment section. Uh, some people do. Um, I'm not going to be looking at it, so I'm trusting you to be fair in your comments. And I'm trusting other people to watch out under the video, and if anybody's abusing under the video, to to uh, alert YouTube about that. So. So I'll give people the opportunity to share their thoughts and in a few weeks time I'll come back and see what people have to say and I will be uh, preaching from time to time on YouTube. So I'm just trusting that the YouTube community, the atheist community will see sense and show some compassion and realize that um, to have more of a balanced approach towards me and um, to recognize that um, I'm not going to go away and that I am going to continue to preach the Word of God and to recognize the, the difficult journey that I had to, and, and all the rest of it uh, and to recognize that things have recently got out of hand and that we just have to be gracious to each other and um, try and build bridges. So I'm hoping that some people see sense in the next few weeks. But I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't want Christians to worry about I'm addicted to YouTube because I'm going to be staying away. Uh, for a whole, for a long holiday, I don't want uh, atheists to stress that they're going to worry that I'm going to come on and start attacking them and uh, making lots of videos against them. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be chilling out for the next few weeks and hoping that things resolve themselves. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. All right. I just wanted people to see my face. I wanted you to see that I'm okay. And I wanted you to see that 
also that humiliation trying to break me is not going to work because it's made me stronger but stronger in a more positive sense um, and so there we are and I just wanted people who were worried about me thinking that this was going to finish me off I wanted you to see that it's not finished me off it's made me stronger but it's made me stronger in a more positive sense it's made me re rediscover who I am and it, it's bring it's just brought uh, a radical healing because it's made me recognize my calling all my grief and struggles have been because I didn't know who I was anymore and I now know who I am who am I? who am I? I'm the chief of sinners called to preach the gospel of grace that's who I am alright God bless and have a lovely day and um, see you around don't forget folks don't forget to read not this one Herman Bavink Herman Bavink Herman Bavink Reform Dogmatics four volumes I haven't got it I read it a few years ago this is the smaller version Herman Bavink Reform Dogmatics all right, Herman Bavink, Reform Dogmatics, four volumes, creme de la creme. A must read in your life has got to be a must read. You are missing a treat if you do not read those four volumes of Herman Bavink. I'll push it again. And I will show you, I will show you. We'll just have a little light relief for a minute. I will show you my f favorite song at the moment. I mean, that I like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good to be alive, folks. Oh, oh, oh. I've got to be here. It's coming out. The crazy side's just coming out. I've got to calm down, Jay. Calm down. Calm down, you just done the word of God. Calm down. All right. Hey, bye. Hey, hey, have you noticed something? Have you noticed something, folks? My sideburns are getting better. My sideburns are getting better. Who cut my hair over those years? Does any? What was going on over those years? My hair cuts were so bad. I was going to these people, these women over the years paying them three pounds there's these cheap uh, places where you can get your hair cut for three pounds and so I go to these cheap hairdressers and they cut my hair and they butchered it and I looked crazy over the years but I've started going to hairdressers uh, where you pay ten pounds this this guy was a Turk Turkish guy and it, I think it was eight pounds but um, the um, the uh, normally I go to two ladies and it's ten pounds to get your hair cut so my sideburns are looking a lot better these are reformed sideburns just joking that's an in-house joke alright so uh, I love, the, I love there. I'll show you this. This is really. I absolutely love these. If anybody wants to get me a birthday present, this would be a great birthday present. 
or a Christmas present. If you ever want it all club together and get me a Christmas present, is this the Reform Dogmatics? You see it? Yeah. And then I'm going to show you now something else. I'm going to show you. I've got to be careful because I don't want to get done for copyright thing. So, you job, your job. Here we are. Here we are now, folks. I'll just show you. Gotta go, gotta go. This, I absolutely love this. This is mine. I'm going to play a, a couple of seconds. play anymore but uh, that's one of my favorite songs at the moment so that's it I gotta go and uh, love to everybody out there take care and uh, I've got to go all right God bless I'll try to keep the crazy side down take care God bless love to everybody out there and behave yourselves all right Behave yourselves. Yeah. Can you see down there? Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I don't think you can see, mate. But you see over there. Cows over there. Cows. It's a lovely day. It's a day to enjoy. So enjoy the day, everybody. Atheist, Christian, Jew, Muslim, whoever you are, enjoy the day. Gotta go. And so God bless. <laughs>